Hi, I'm Brent Finnamore. Thanks for joining me. I help companies to spend less, sell more, and serve better. And today's little short meeting is about meetings. I want to talk about can-do meetings, and it's a formula, the can-do formula, to help you make your meetings more effective. And gosh knows we all have more meetings than ever these days. Now, a lot of people, when they're dealing with meetings, they focus on running them rather than planning them. So a lot of what we see about improving meetings tends to be about things like make sure everyone gets a chance to talk, how to facilitate a meeting. I'd like to propose to you that we often try to get better at running meetings that never should have taken place in the first place or that never had a chance in the first place because the wrong people are there. It goes off track and so on. And we all know how frustrating these things can be. Well, there is a fix and it's the can-do formula. We don't want the wrong people there. We won't, don't want it to go off track. We, we don't want to have no action come from a meeting. We don't want it to be inefficient. And so let's solve all those problems with one set of ideas. First thing to think about is why do we attend so many meetings? We have lots of meetings, but why do we choose to attend so many? And we, att we choose to attend meetings for all kinds of bad reasons, don't we? Uh, maybe we're afraid of missing out on something. <laughs> Is that a good reason to attend a meeting and then complain about too many meetings? Or a rival is attending or someone we want to keep an eye on, so we want to be there to get firsthand. Or we may, we may feel obligated or afraid to decline. That's often a problem or at least a factor. And finally, there could just be a cu company culture that says, attend all meetings you're invited to. And it's an unspoken thing like most culture is. As a result, we have people checking their phones. We have people late, showing up late, not showing up at all. We have meetings that go off track, right? They become disorganized, confused, and we lose time. Maybe there is no track in the first place to, to stay on track with. Maybe there's no agenda. And people nod off and zone out. And so all these things lead to frustration. So the can-do formula I want to show you is best leveraged with high-impact meetings. Let me explain what that is. There are probably about six kinds of meetings. There could be more, but generally experts agree there's around six different types. Decision meetings, where you need to make some kind of decision, problem solving meetings, innovation meetings, status update meetings, info sharing meetings, and team building meetings. Probably just about any meeting, probably eight out of 10 of the meetings you ever attend in a given month could probably fit somewhere into one of those six categories. Now, the first set of meetings, decision, problem solving, innovation, tend to have more tangible ass, uh, results than, than uh, status update, info sharing, and team building. But certainly they're all important and they're all necessary. It's just that these first three are the greatest opportunity to leverage. So what we want to do is take our most important meetings, let's call them high impact meetings, meetings where we have to make decisions, we have to solve a problem, come up with solutions, or a, a meeting involving a need for innovation. These three kinds of meetings stand out because they are where the can-do formula will produce the most good. So the can-do formula for high-impact meetings then, like those three examples, works like this. First of all, contributors. C is for contributors. Meetings are for contributors. You don't attend a meeting. You have to take that out of your vocabulary. You contribute to a meeting. And contributors are people whose skills, experience, knowledge will lend to the creation of the decisions the meeting requires. So that is what a contributor is. Someone who can help facilitate a decision. The decisions, the list of decisions that the meeting needs to produce is called the agenda, which takes us to the next point. The agenda is the list of actions, decisions that need to take place to achieve a higher purpose, a higher goal. Without an agenda, there's no track to stay on. So meetings go off track. Now you say, you're probably saying, well, we do create agendas. Yes, but I'm gonna show you a very specific criteria for one that makes it a can-do agenda. Remember this, no agenda, no attenda. That N is no presentations, no new material at a high impact meeting. As soon as you show a new PowerPoint presentation or a new document, it is no longer a meeting, it is now a presentation. And so present material that's to be reviewed needs to be sent out days and days before the meeting so we've got the chance to look it over and figure out how they can contribute to the meeting and support the agenda. No new presentations. 
That's a big one for a lot of companies in my experience. Next, meetings are for decisions, not discussion. Now, I know what you're thinking. You think, well, Brent, there has to be there has to be discussion. Yes, but discussion isn't the point. In your agenda, you don't say the goal is to discuss. No, discussion's not a goal. Discussion's not a uh, it's a means to a decision. And so the job of the facilitator in the meeting, the leader of the meeting, is to drive people toward decisions and not just have discussion for discussion's sake. It's a very important point. Everyone needs to be focused on decision and not spend too long in discussion or meetings drag on. And finally, meetings have to have an outcome or an objective. Now, this seems obvious, I know, but think how rare it is that a clear outcome, a clear objective is articulated in the agenda of the last meeting you've been to in the last week or so. How clearly has it been articulated? So I got a couple of criteria here for you, but remember without an objective, without an outcome, how do we know the value of the meeting? And then of course, these all work together. The outcome is what the items in the agenda are driven toward. So the agenda becomes the way we achieve the outcome, the agenda of decisions to achieve the outcome. I'll give you an example of a great outcome or objective. So improve online customer experience and point of sale process to help improve online close ratio to 80%. This goal contributes to our company-wide objective to achieve sales of 1.4 billion by 2023. Now, a couple of things to notice in this objective statement. First, notice how clear the objective is, the outcome. It's to improve the online close ratio to 80%. That is a very specific goal or objective. It keeps everyone focused and lets them see how they can contribute. The next thing I want you to notice, the objective or goal has also been connected to a higher outcome, a higher objective of the company, right? The 1.5 billion. So now it has more relevance. Everyone can see it's a priority. It's important. This will be a high impact meeting. And finally, notice that also the objective is tied to a key process in this company. What's a key process? Any process that these days, because it changes, is critical to your company's current strategy. So it's geared toward improving a process. This is a very good objective, very good statement of the, of the outcome or objective. Here's an example of an, of an agenda. A good agenda must always have location, outcome, prep, timeline. Look at them there in green. So location, outcome is to improve, like we said on the previous slide. Preparation, remember, if you want people to contribute, you have to share with them how they need to contribute. So review attached process document and SWOT analysis document and come to the meeting with insights to achieve the outcome. Then you have your timeline. And notice how important it is these days to spend some time and have it part of the agenda for personal check-in. How's everyone doing? Relationships and managing stress and being able to share as much as anyone wishes to is so important these days now that we're less face-to-face. -face. So we have contributors, agenda, no presentations, decisions, not discussion, and outcome, clear outcome. This is for your decision meetings, problem solving meetings, and innovation meetings. Simple formula. Now, there are actually 15 things you have to do. Don't be intimidated though. They don't take a lot of time, but all 15 need to be done. 15 steps to actually organizing the can-do elements and creating a winning meeting. Planning and preparing and organizing a winning meeting. Now, seven of the steps actually have to happen before the meeting even takes place. That's why I said earlier planning is perhaps more important than running the meeting. Now, during the meeting, five things have to happen. And after the meeting, three things have to happen. Now, I'm not gonna get into all 15 in this quick, short video, but look, go, to, go check out my podcast. It's free. You can find it on uh, Apple. You can find it on Spotify. You can find it on Google Play, wherever you like to listen to podcasts and give it a listen and you'll be able to hear it all in detail. When you plan a high impact meeting, Follow the 15 steps that you'll see, you'll hear in the podcast. When you're invited to a high impact meeting, ask, is there an agenda? Ask, what would you like me to contribute? These two questions will cut to the chase of whether this meeting is worth your time. So we attend fewer of them and the ones we attend are more relevant and more pertinent and more meaningful. 
What happens when everyone in your organization develops a deep understanding of the can-do formula and everyone starts using it and it catches on throughout the organization? Your meetings are far more productive. Does that sound like something you want to be part of? Yeah, the right people are present. The right decisions get made. Meetings feel better. They're more rewarding because they're more focused and also because people behave themselves during them. And finally, meetings are shorter. So these are things we all want. So what do I do for a living? I help companies like yours. Reach out to me if I can help you in any other way. And thanks for listening.